Well, for some people, yes. <laughs> well, it, people get most impressed when Marty says that. Yeah. So, now, is they going to edit this tape, or is it just going to be yeah. as is? The, it's, the tape itself is going to be as is. But the tape itself, uh, we, we don't generally put that up on the web. Right. Unless it's edited. If, yeah. if, if it's going to be edited, we can't edit it. That gets sent to another So, but somebody area. has to make it. Uh, yeah, and they don't. Take the us out or the. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, if I give you a DVD today, it will be raw. OK. Yeah. But that would be nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as Steve said, if it goes on the web, it will be edited. Yeah. But uh, but what will go on the web for sure is is uh, a transcript with his music. Oh, wonderful! And and that's what I want to talk to you about maybe a little bit uh, before you go is um, and maybe we can do it at lunch uh, about is doing right, the the art. Is it right to invite books. Barbara to to join oh, us? Oh, sure. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are recording. Yeah. <laughs> so start anytime. Okay, we're back now. Uh, I'm back uh, with. Uh, Susan Schwalb and Martin Boykin, uh, man and wife, incidentally, and they've been working uh, not only as man and wife, but as, as uh, uh, collaborators uh, for several years now. Um, welcome, Susan. Hi. And welcome back, Marty. From, I think uh, it's from husband and wife, don't you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, husband and wife. <laughs> I can't yes. help to say that. <laughs> this has to be equal, equal right? <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely fine. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you uh, and to bring you into the conversation because you have, uh, I think, a, a unique relationship artistically. Uh, it's not just, a, 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 to me, uh, uh, the fact that you support each other artistically in right. your own separate work, but you've actually done work together. And some of this work has now um, made it into uh, the collections of the Music Division and the Library of Congress, which we're Correct. very happy to have. And uh, we're going to be doing something with that in the very near future, I hope. Uh, but I, in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the creation of that work. And so uh, could I start with you, Susan, as far as the kind of art you do and uh, the kind of process that you, uh, you work with? Okay, so I work in um, a Renaissance drawing technique, silver point. Drawing, it, you draw with metal on a prepared surface. Famous artists in the medium, Dora da Vinci, even Rembrandt drew in silver point and metal point. I'm an abstract artist primarily and work with paintings and drawings and I combine media with metal point um, like acrylic paint and, and other, other things. Um, and I had always wanted to make some kinds of artist books. The first one was like a little test book, which is the one I was hoping to donate to the library, mm -hmm. which included Marty's, it was um, pages from, um, from the Elegy that he, um, they were the sketches that he was discarding and discarded them to me. And so um, I made two, preliminary pieces where I collaged some drawings and some found objects um, with the music music sketches and and it makes an informal book but not a very um, crafted project. When you say with you collaged it. I, right on top. Okay you're, but I you're talking his, about the manuscript music. Right. right. I use the paper the, the, the you know that folds over mm -hmm. and, and a sheet and I put a few sheets together book like and collage things on top of it and glued things mm -hmm. on it, just using his music as a background, right? <laughs> background material. Um, but it's almost since we met at Yado in 1981, we began to talk about doing a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And we talked um, a very long time, over 10 years, because Tell your part oh, you of the oh, okay. If there's a handoff here, well, we, just tell we've that. All, we've yes. often talked about this, and the fact is, uh, I was very excited to do a, mm -hmm. a book, and my notion was I would provide a score. Um, there would be a tape. I would provide the score, and that Susan would uh, decorate the 
the top and the, and the edges. And it would be sort of like a, an illuminated medieval manuscript. Mm -hmm. But this was not Susan's idea at all. I would provide the score in her idea, and <laughs> she would then cut it up into pieces, and then glue it together in some sort of collage, and then draw all over it. Uh -huh. so, this was <laughs> so for 10 years, we did nothing. <laughs> well, and then we kept thinking, um, <clears throat> should we work off text, because Marty set so much text mm -hmm. and is inspired by so many poems that maybe we should choose a text and use the text and both relate to it in some way. And we can never agree on text. And I don't work off of text. So um, I work inspired by art, by landscape, by light, by memories of all these things. Mm -hmm. um, so finally, after many years of never doing a collaborative book project, um, I was invited to be in an exhibition about the, what is it, the 3,000 3, mm -hmm. um, uh, anniversary of the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so there was to be an exhibition, and I was invited to make a piece for it, and, I, and it said you could have collaboration. And I turned to Marty and I said, this is our moment. We're going to collaborate on this because we know we can exhibit the item. Because sometimes you make something with someone else and this is, it may never get exhibited, and that's kind of depressing. Um, so, in a sense, you commissioned Marty. In in a vague <laughs> sense, or so the the institution, uh -huh. the, the JCC of Newton, commissioned us both because I I asked them would this mm -hmm. be okay, and in the end we did a, this the City of Gold book mm -hmm. that the library owns uh, with. And I also did a painting that hung with the exhibition, also entitled City of Gold. And um, to know how we do this, usually. Um, so we had the idea. At the time, I was working in a lot of gold leaf and a lot of images about outer space. So it seemed appropriate to make an artwork on this subject of the gold celestial city of, of Jerusalem. And you thought about the piece? Oh, uh, well, we built a solution to our problems because the flute is a biblical instrument. and it I was going to ask why the flute. Okay. It's a biblical mm -hmm. instrument, and it, and it takes to write a score for just one instrument, takes very little space. So I said to Susan, oh, I can write it, and then you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You'll have the whole page to, to fill up. And Yeah, so he wrote a three minute piece, which because they were going to play it, mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 so the piece begins and ends with the same notes, right? The mm -hmm. same few measures, so that it could circle, although we had technical problems yeah. with the cassette tape because it didn't immediately restart to play, and the book is not turnable because I couldn't let people turn it, mm -hmm. so that, in fact, the project, though exhibited and made, and it's, I don't remember how many pages it is, 15, 20, 12 sides. Um, I think it's closer to 12. I you know, it has, yeah. it has a beautiful design cover, and then it has the title page, and the music either runs at the bottom, it runs in a circle, it runs in, 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 in the swirls, and it, when we do this, Marty, in this way, M Marty writes the music, he gets me a tape so I can actually hear mm -hmm. it because I, I get nothing from reading the music. And that's the way we've done all our books. Um, and so he's first interpreting the theme. And then I'm listening to the music and then doing what I think, which is not an interpretation of the music per mm -hmm. se, um, but um, trying to hear something in the music and, you know, I tend to make... Um, sketches for the project, which when Marty looks at, I have laid the book out. And this is sometimes where we've had more collaborative discussions. I remember in, I think it was Flume, where I had done something and Marty said, mm, re-listen to the music here. That's the only time he said something about the layout and the design. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You know. So then Marty writes the score. Mm -hmm. I draw in the bar lines and the staff lines. And Marty writes the score, and I make the image. And in the case of City Gold, we made two unique books, which the library owns. Mm -hmm. One and the other one is at the Houghton 
mm -hmm. at Harford. And in the, each book has a CD. And City of Gold is wonderful. It has Fen Fendrick. Fenwick Smith is a flutist from the Boston right. Symphony, and he's a, it's a wonderful performance. It's a fabulous performance. <coughs> As a matter of fact, it was performed for a small group here. I didn't tell you this. Oh. oh. Yeah. Uh, it was about two or three months ago. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but it was not a, a open performance. It was just some special guests, and they really enjoyed and, it. And that, of, of our three books, that is the only one that has a complete piece mm -hmm. in it. The other two books, Flume and Nocturne, the Accordion Phone book, Flume, and the Scroll book, Nocturne, um, Marty wrote me a minute of music. Mm -hmm. and, and then he continued the piece. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a minute. It's, it's like, and <clears throat> in terms of creating the books, it's me who comes up with the idea of the format. Mm -hmm. And I'm always looking for a format that's different than my regular work, because that's the challenge of writing, of making this project. That it's, although the medium relates to, and the image relates to the work that I'm doing, um, the format, whether it's an, I had never done an accordion fold book. I had never done a scroll drawing before, each with their own complex problems. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, in a sense, the, the, the first one, uh, The City of Gold, where you had to turn pages was a sort of a learning experience, I assume, because you, what the intent was uh, that it was going to be an exhibit, correct? Correct. And so it had to, uh, and the music was going to loop, but you can't loop a book. No. Uh, without people uh, there, you know, there's ways ripping people, pages and, and things like that. People have wanted, I mean, maybe we could do it now, now with the way the internet is and how you, right. I could take the pages of the book fuse them together with the score in the back. It's mm -hmm. actually possible with a PowerPoint presentation. Sure. If, if you know enough how to do it, I think we could actually make such an item, which might be nice because then you could see and hear mm -hmm. at the same time, something that very few people are able to do with our projects because they don't hear the music if they're reading the music. Only a musician can mm -hmm. hear the music and see it right. at the same time. The it, it sounds like uh, you were trying to solve the problem, a very practical problem, by first going with. I associate the the fold out with uh, with uh, Eastern, uh, with Japanese. Of course, and, and that like I'm that. incredibly inspired by Eastern um, and Oriental it, art. It, it it shows in my uh, uh, <laughs> little knowledge. It, I mean, I, I I can sense that, uh, and then uh, you went to what I consider more of a Middle Eastern, more ancient. Thing which is the uh, which is a scroll, right? And it has very high high religious significance, obviously. I think. The, well, I mean, the for, format for me, does. it's it's a curious thing because I, I'm again influenced by uh, by Asian art because when the book has been exhibited and that book has been widely exhibited, uh, um, and even more than Flume um, and the City of Gold books, um, all, all of which have been exhibited mm -hmm. in multiple places, but. Uh, with Nocturne, it can be shown all the way out mm -hmm. or partial, like any or a Japanese or Chinese mm -hmm. scroll. The difference between this is that there's only one dowel. And right. in fact, it, it's closer to um, uh, the original scroll of the uh, Mag Megillah, right? Yeah, the Torah. Of, mm -hmm. of, Torah uh, well, the... but not even that, of, of the um, Purim. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is usually the done with Esther. one dowel and pulled out and right. read. Um, it's, but that is not exactly what I was thinking about when no. I did it. And okay. in fact, I was just thinking, and when I, I did research by going to the Fog uh, Art Museum and looking at scrolls mm -hmm. and how they were put together and what the dowels were like and what the ties were like. I mean, I did, that's where I did the research. I sat mm -hmm. with a, one of the curators and conservators there. And in the end, I did what I wanted. Um, I mean, I, I, I had a Japanese-American dealer at the time, and when she saw how I was tying the scroll up, she said, well, that's not the correct way to tie it, And I, <laughs> from the point of view mm -hmm. of Japan. But, of course, this was my book. It's, not, it's only inspired by it. Mm -hmm. It isn't emulating um, something, something else. So, Marty, uh, on your end, um, these are fairly 
fairly recent, given your whole yeah, uh, yeah. output, uh, fairly recent pieces. Uh, how did you approach writing this, since you were sort of the first into the pool? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of odd, but I was thinking when Susan was talking, uh, this is sort of like writing a movie score before the movie's done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then making the movie. <laughs> the uh, City of Gold was actually like a movie score insofar as that I, the only piece I actually composed with, this, with a uh, stopwatch because it had uh -huh. to be just so long so that mm -hmm. it could, uh, uh, the, uh, the cassette could rewind. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, failed to calculate the amount of time it takes for the cassette to, in fact, rewind. Right. Uh, yeah. So it was a t technical disaster that way. But that was the only one that is a complete piece. The, uh, so I just wrote a flute piece, that's mm -hmm. all. Um, and um, the second one, Flume... Um, Which was for, was that the clarinet? That's for clarinet. clarinet, okay. For clarinet and other instruments. So all of them have to be one instrument to leave enough uh, space for mm -hmm. Susan to, to do the image. Mm -hmm. So Flume is then a, a fairly extended piece. Uh, which starts with clarinet alone. And I was intrigued, so I wrote the clarinet piece just as a clarinet piece first. But I was very intrigued formally, so what happens? The, when the clarinet has been playing for um, a minute or a minute and a half, and then the pianist walks in because he's been stuck in a traffic jam and he's late, and uh, so how does, what does he do? Mm -hmm. And that's in the piece, so the pianist is sort of fitting in with the harmony a little, mm -hmm. very tentative. Uh, the response to the fact that, you know, there's been what is not really an introduction, but a considerable mm -hmm. amount of the music before, before the pianist. Mm -hmm. And the third was, uh, actually, I, I thought uh, originally of setting the um, Song of Songs, mm -hmm. passages from the Song of Songs, so let's just, uh, and it started with uh, th uh, three older instruments. Uh, 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 Biodegamba? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, a um, chest of vials uh, to, to give it the antique sense, starting, of course, again with the solo, the viola de gamba. Mm -hmm. um, and there's another uh, newer version for it with contemporary instruments. Um, but, but really again, but again, there is this solo of that has to be first, and then the singer comes in with the other instrument, mm -hmm. and so each of them had a little formal interest for me. But it was your and idea, Marty brought up the idea of the because he he chooses the instruments. This mm -hmm. is not something I'm going to choose. Um, that um, with the last project, which is hopefully not our final project. Um, I hope we have a, a notion, it's just no, nowhere. Um, but that Renaissance drawing technique, Renaissance instruments, right. modern mm -hmm. music, modern, so this was Marty's notion of, of coming into the project. And it, it, the piece is called Nocturne, the first minute, but the, not the full piece, the piece is called Motet. Motet. Okay. And in okay. fact, I don't even know on the score if you mark no. Nocturne as the first no. minute, no. No. but that is the music that appears in in the scroll book. That is the book that um, I didn't anticipate issues like I made. We made a very large edition, mm -hmm. handmade, of ten books. This was quite a lot, and I didn't anticipate the problems in exhibiting it and of not, it not being viewed. Is it a book or is it something else? Mm -hmm. um, but it was for me uh, an interesting project to do. What what I hope we do next, because it's the next. I'm just starting to go back to prints. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done an aquatint recently, and I've had the idea that the next project would be more classical artist book, in terms of a museum mm -hmm. books, um, using a printmaking technique. It, again, it wouldn't be a large edition necessarily, but. Here, Marty wouldn't have to copy the music 10 times. I wouldn't have to draw it 10 times. And in fact, he could have more music because if, if I raise the money to do this, mm -hmm. um, it could have, it could be 
either piano, because it could be, because I've always been interested that the piece would be piano, but there's two, mm -hmm. two, two, staves. two staves. And, you know, again, we've discussed should we have text, but I don't think we're going to have a text again. I think, again, it'll still be just the m music and um, the visual, which makes it quite unique in mm -hmm. artist books. There's a lot of artist books with text and art, and and there are some illustrated songs, mm -hmm. I mean, song books. I mean, um, whether they're religious or not, I'm thinking of um, Baskin did some things, you know, whether they were uh, for the Haggadah or not, mm -hmm. whether uh, there's text and there's music and there's illustrations and stuff of that kind. But, you know, ours is a, a it's somewhat unique approach to all of this. The question, I don't know in taking on this, and I haven't done, I'm nowhere near ready. Mm -hmm. I have to do more prints to even know how to think about the image, because it's completely different for me. Um, and how we, how we would do it, whether the, just the technique would be enough of a challenge mm -hmm. so that the format becomes more of a folio book. Mm -hmm. at, at least that's my initial in, impulse, unless it isn't. Right. <laughs> And but I do think Marty could write a little bit more. We could have full pages of music if we wanted. Um, I just don't know that we want to do that. I don't know. We're we're only in this very pre stage. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's going to be going further. Uh, I mean that this <laughs> the collaboration. The three, well, the three is not the is not going to be the end. I of hope it. not. I hope not. Uh, I mean, I I've done other artist book like projects without mm -hmm. him, um, but. Um, well, it may interest you to know or to hear that, um, I mean, I've, I don't know what the word is, uh, listen or look, uh, neither of them works uh, with this, I, I, I must say, because it's, it's, it's and, and what I'm going to say illustrates why I think that uh, several months ago, maybe as much as a year ago, uh, a friend of mine, um, who teaches uh, at a college um, at, was asking uh, for suggestions for a class he was teaching in counterpoint for um, unusual examples of counterpoint in the mm -hmm. 20th century. And the usual things came up, bar talk and, and things like that. And I, and, and, and I was thinking about this and I was thinking of not uh, really responding because all the usual suspects were being named and I said and so but I finally wrote to him and I said you know if you really want to um, go the 20th century route and be very unusual I said I think that this is an example of uh, two-part uh, counterpoint and I gave your three works oh, as an example how of interesting. counterpoint mm. uh, and uh, he actually liked the idea, uh, <laughs> and so, as far as I know, uh, the we have students I said, making images. With well, I said, music. unfortunately for you, where you are, uh, I believe that you can only get an, uh, have your students get a, a performance of this counterpoint by going to uh, a museum in New York City or, or Boston or coming down to Washington. So I don't know how how it went over, but. Where is That's, it located? The books are uh, in the West Coast, it's, it's, too. It's uh, uh, up near uh, Princeton, um, the uh, uh, choir, um, I can't remember the name of the uh, uh, college. Oh, is it in you know. New Jersey? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yes. No, there would have to be, it, then it would have to be New York, Washington. That's right, the closest. Right, Because we we, our books are in a lot of places. But the, but the point is that, uh, is that um, it's easy to think about this, like I was saying before, uh, with tongue-in-cheek as, as being, well, you, you compose a movie score, yeah, and then you yeah. write the movie and, and produce yeah, the movie. Yeah. But that's not really what happens. No. And I, I think that, that my, so far, the best uh, description I can have of it is a new kind of counterpoint. What a it's, nice title for the next project. <laughs> I yes. like that. And I'm always looking for titles. And in, in, in a sense, it's, it's, it seems like a, a very old thing where somebody writes a line and somebody else has to write another line. Yes, right. And, and, right. and that well, there's actually has like, a connection with haiku and, and yes, Japanese it, yes, style it, forms uh, of poetry. There, there yes, is a yes. long history of artists right. doing that, making, what is it, the exquisite corpse, making a uh -huh. surrealist who did a piece and then was sent to someone else and they did another piece and then it, it turns into a fantastical mm -hmm. uh, 
right. creation. Well, I'm, I could have brought with one or all of the three uh, artist books for this interview, but I decided not to for the very reason that uh, when, when we do a transcription of this interview and it goes up on the web, I would really like to just do a good version instead of having something sitting on the table that no, the you, camera pans into and, no. well, that's what it looks like. Now I know. Well, you don't know until you really experience it. So uh, um, I've got to look into, because I've just learned how to do PowerPoint, and I do have, mm -hmm. I think I have all the images of the book you own, but I'm not sure. I have to see which you have. I have not. Uh, Has it been I can give you a digitization of uh, a first uh, couple pages of, uh, of um, no, but I was uh, City of Gold. But I'm, I'm me I, we have to be very careful about it because as you know no, better than I, I do, I have you can't just slap it on a... a um, I, I have slides and then digital. Of, mm -hmm. I don't know if I have both copies. It was City of Gold 1 and 2. Okay. And I'm not sure which the library owns. So I, 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 I version is indicated. I well, don't, I don't it's so. it's it's in my records. Okay. Um, certainly, there were two versions. I don't know that I mm -hmm. numbered them on the project one and two, um, but I must see if cause I actually realized by just talking here that it, one could do a PowerPoint showing the double face pages and have have it fade in. I mean, it's not. It's not impossible for us to create this, but um, I have to think about it. My, my assistant's right. pretty good at this, right. but I don't know about adding the music part of it, whether she could do that or someone else. But it might be fun. Well, it's another opportunity to be creative. So. Yeah. Well, I, this, this has been fascinating, and I, uh, there's a lot more about metal point work that I, I think that, uh, that we could get into. Oh, yes, well, uh, you can't erase it. It tarnishes, it changes <laughs> color. It's very precision work, and it's extraordinarily beautiful. Yeah, and it's very, uh, you have to be very careful with it when you want to copy it. Well, and it. it's, 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 it's... You can't it's, just treat it like a book. <laughs> <laughs> it will come apart. Well, the book might, not the middle point. That's forever. Yeah. So. Uh, but anyway, I really want to thank both of you for being with us today. Well, this thank has been a wonderful no, discussion. No, it's been a treat. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Well, uh, you come back and visit us, and, uh, we and will we that. will work together on, on uh, getting uh, the illustration up. And as well uh, as well as it would what be I nice if it could come up with the music. Yes, that's no, a, that's that's how it has to do. Has you to know, work, so that you can you can really experience right. it the way in theory mm -hmm. we've imagined it. I mean, the books stand on their own; mm -hmm. they don't need the audio right. tape t to be beautiful objects. Mm -hmm. But I think the music is part of it, and that's why we've always had a CD with right. with it, so that in theory you could play play it and look at it mm -hmm. simultaneously, mm -hmm. perhaps. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Steve, yes. since you mentioned close-ups of the book, do you want to hold, hold them up? Is it one or two? No, 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 we no don't I, don't, I don't have them oh. here, Mike. Yeah, these are art books, and uh, they just, I didn't want to bring them into oh, this situation. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, there, there is a fragility to be moving yeah. them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about how, how to do that because basically, I mean, the, the issue is uh, uh, Susan and Marty have to have a heavy hand in this because this is actually creating a new edition. Okay. So they're, they're, they've got copyright issues that uh, okay. they're going to want to consider. Okay. Well, then, okay. Uh, we are done. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Mike. Thank you. Sure. Well, yeah. I own the copyright. But, uh, that's but... what's so great about this.